ladies and gentlemen and welcome to zoom in the ultimate insider's look at the Abu Dhabi Jiu Jitsu Pro. This is your host Zahi Frem and I sure hope everyone is doing great today. Whether you're a diehard fan or new to the Jiu Jitsu game, zoom in is your ticket to front row access on everything AJP, exclusive interviews and all the things in between. You name it and we will surely have it. So sit back, relax and get ready to zoom in on all the action. Let me tell you this, today we have a fantastic first episode. Who is happening and what is happening on today's program? Listen up. We'll be joined by Sarah Galvao, the latest Galvao family product. And we will also have Brodio Estima, the jiu-jitsu legend on our show, where we will talk about Abu Dhabi Grandstand London, which was live this weekend from the Copper Box Arena. Miss this event? Visit AJPTour.tv and catch up on everything. We will also talk with black belt Ahmed Majid from Onubis Academy about the Egypt National Pro, which happened earlier this month. Big waves in Egypt this championship had, and even until now, everyone is still talking about it. Prior to that, we will have Sean Goolsby, a very interesting new face on the AJP scene, who has much to say about moving to the UAE, competing extensively in our championships, and much, much more. So let's get that show running. Sarah, thank you very much for taking the time to have this interview with us. I know you guys are traveling back to the States very soon, but we had to talk. We had to talk about the amazing performance you had. You submitted two of your opponents. You won all four matches. Tell me about that. Well, um, it feels really good. I, um, I really love fighting AJP just because it's a different rule set. And um, I'm not really used to fighting anything other than IBJJF. So when I do fight AJP, it's um, more challenging. So I think it's more fun. And I came here super excited. By, um, since I won last year World Pro, AJP gave me the opportunity to fight um, Purple Belt Adult Division. So that was huge. Um, I, I fought, I had four fights. I submitted two and um no one scored points against me so um i feel really confident i feel really good like i i felt my jitsu was um more a uh, higher level i'd say my technique was good overall i just felt confident and how was the preparation coming into this championship knowing that you're going to compete against blue belt this time i mean purple belts well um we, over at Autos HQ, we have amazing women, so I think that I was already really prepared. My mom told me, like, a month before the the actual tournament date, so then, like, I wasn't really, I was already prepared, so there wasn't much to still prepare for other than just remembering the AJP rule sets. Great, and yesterday, post-event, I saw you had an interview with Chris, one of our colleagues, and you said you were aiming to submit everyone. Like, that's a Mamba mentality. Tell me where that came from. Well, um, of course, the, the fights are five minutes long, so it's fast. And so you have to be very aggressive the whole time. And I, I wanted to submit more because um, the fight overall will look prettier if you submit. And... Um, Submission, always hunting for submissions is just like jitsu is all about that. If you see something, go for it. You can end the match in like 10 seconds if you really try to. So my goal was just to finish as fast as I could. Unfortunately, I couldn't submit two of my, my opponents, but overall, I think I did a good job. Well, out of these four opponents, which one was the hardest? They were all really hard, but I think I'd say the my finalist was really hard because well when you're in the finals that's when everybody goes like a hundred percent because that's the that's your one ticket to winning gold right so um everybody goes like a hundred percent and she was really strong um i liked competing with her she like didn't stop fighting till the end but i don't know what happened but i had like three submissions on her at one point um i don't know how she like held on for so long. She was really strong, really flexible. But, it's Shama, um, right? Yes, yeah. She's really good. She's yeah. really strong. Shama um, is a tough girl. She's one of the 
you know, strongest girls on the scene in Purple Belt. Yeah, she, she's really good. So um, I remember my mom was like, was like, oh, yeah, you're going to fight this girl. She's like, one of the best over there, like, just keep your eye out for her. And um, another thing I did want to pull with some of the girls, I was like, hoping to do some more stand up game or to show some of my guard, right. But everybody pulled first, they just like, we shook hands, and then they sat down right away. And I think I'm more dominant passing. So that's okay with me. I felt like really strong. And I prefer passing anyways. So after that win, do we have a promotion in the air? Is there talks about getting that purple soon? Well, that's all up to my parents. I have nothing to do with it. If they want to keep me another year in blue, they can do that. I'm in no rush to get my purple belt. But um, I think that having these opportunities in AJP showing me, like showing that I have the jiu-jitsu level to fight purple belts, then I think that the purple belt will come at the right time. And talking about your parents, you have this special relationship. Not everyone gets to train with their parents. Not everyone has parents like yours, let's, let's uh, call it that. Tell me about the guidance you have. Tell me about how this plays a big role in your career. Honestly, um, well, since I was little i was just and tournaments 24 7 always like watching my dad prepare his mentality ever since like a little girl and how my mom like helped him and all that so i think even if let's for example let's say i did jujitsu i would have still grew up with like their how they behave and their mentality because it's just so powerful they're so like inspirational even for people who don't do jiu-jitsu and um my mom of course she doesn't like fight anymore but um she does help me just as much as my dad does maybe not as much on the mats but weightlifting eating well mentality all that stuff is usually with my mom and my dad is just like hard work and technique and strength and um, honestly, having like such a good relationship with my parents helps so much because I don't look at them as my professors, you know. I look at them as my parents normally. I have nothing to prove to them if I know that they're going to be proud of me, win or lose, you know. So I just go there and do my job, and in the end, they, they are always proud of me. I actually watched a video of you rolling with uh, Andre. He doesn't go easy on you, right? Oh, no, no, it's no, he goes like really hard. I yeah, I don't know. It's always like we are both really competitive in whatever we do. So like, but those hard roles in between like the roles we have, he always like, oh, no, he'll always show me like little techniques, little like mistakes that I've done and correct me. So it's always like even us just rolling and having fun. I'm learning something out of it. Awesome, awesome to hear. And the atmosphere at Atos HQ, is it like is it like that every time or is it like that just before the championships? Tell me about that. Well, over at Atos HQ, we have many, many champions. So um, for some people, it could be a bit um, frightening or a little, they could be a little anxious going in. But Atos is like one big family, you know, it's like we're we always help each other i'd say no one's like competitive with each other we're always like learning together and i think that's most important as a team because it's um you need jitsu sure you fight just you solo but you need your team to help you prepare for it you know so i think that both my parents do an amazing job keeping the team together and um it's just that's how they made all the champions. And talking about preparations, what does the future hold for you? What's up? What's next? Well, um, in two weeks, I think, is Pan Ams. So I'll be fighting Pans. So that's why we're trying to rush as soon as we can back to the States, because once I get there, I'm going to train like crazy again. Um, after pans, um, I do I do still want to do some AJP Grand Slams. We'll see, 
but um you'll definitely see me back at world pro for sure for sure um but i will try my best to fight some aj i love ajp honestly i think it's so much fun fighting um under their rule sets i think it's more fun and um i think i have more opportunities too with the ajp so i just want to say thank you for letting me like fight with purple belts because that's an opportunity i thought i'd never get as a juvenile blue belt i'm just gonna make this short so your mother doesn't get mad at us you have a great personality i love the energy i i love the vibrance of galvao sarah the little galvao Thank you for taking the time, and we will see you soon. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Sarah. I hope you guys uh, arrive safe, and good luck in everything. Thank you. Thank you. Be well. All right. Bye. Tough on the mats, kind and vibrant on the video, as you guys saw. Sarah Galvao will be seeing a lot of this young, up-and-coming jiu-jitsu athlete. Coming up next, we're going to have Brolio Estima. We're going to talk a lot about Abu Dhabi Grand Slam London. Stay tuned. Brolio, it's great to finally have you here with us today. Thank you, Zahi. Thank you. It's a pleasure always. No introduction needed, but here's a brief one. Definitely a legend of the sport, a multiple-time world champion, running your own academies all over the world, and now one of the major organizers of the AJP events in the UK. Tell me how all this happened, the transitions, the successes. Tell me all about it. Uh, so basically, um, one of my main reasons uh, that I moved to the UK was to spread the jiu-jitsu to, to Europe, right? So I came here with my team, Grace Baja, and uh, um, uh, can you hear this noise? No, it's good. Okay, cool. Sorry. Can I continue? Sure, go ahead. Can you edit? Okay, sorry. <laughs> so my uh, my main the main reason that I moved to the UK in back in 2002 was to spread the jiu-jitsu love uh, to Europe, especially in the UK. When I came here, there was no many academies around. Nobody knew what jiu-jitsu was, you know. So we started like educating, passing the jiu-jitsu love to everyone around. And um, today, jiu-jitsu uh, UK is one of the biggest uh community in uh, in the uk is the biggest com community in the sport right and um uh, I, I i did competitions uh in back in 2009 the british open that i started so i started getting that um uh development how to do uh competition spread the sport together with the academy right then um, I actually was the very first one to, to join back in the day, I, I think it was 2009, with the, since the World Pro back in the day, I, I started here, but I was in my busy career, I was very active, I was my prime, so I spent a lot of time competing. And uh, then Gus was taking, um, uh, take, taking the responsibility of it, and then now that I did the retired, but I have evolved. You know, I'm still in the sport. I'm still, uh, you know, uh, with the same kind of motivation to carry on spreading jiu-jitsu. Now, not only in the UK, but in the world. Actually, no one has ever retired from jiu-jitsu, right? It's only the decision. It's all up to them. I haven't. <laughs> so, talking about Abu Dhabi Grand Slam London, the organization, the success. Tell me, you went on ground. You were on ground. You saw all the amazing performances. What were the main highlights, in your opinion? Well, um, the London Grand Slam is for sure the second biggest Grand Slam in the world, right, uh, on the AGP. And um, this one, up to date, has been the best and the biggest so far. So that shows a lot we are on the right track. You know, of course, we went through COVID. We all stopped for two years, um, and um, yeah, it's, uh, it has been incredible. Uh, the event was well organized, uh, amazing fights, amazing fighters top ranked around the world come from all over the world to compete. And it's great, it's, it's awesome for all the uh, UK Brazilian Jiu Jitsu community, you know, because you don't have this uh, opportunity to see, you know, the likes of 
Mika Galvão, Carla Zanz, they, they fighting on their, their doorstep. And with such an amazing quality of a show, for sure, this weekend will be in the memories of all of us that will be in there this weekend. Mika. I just got back from there right now <laughs> after all the, the taking care of the, all the setup. And yes, it's a, it's a hard work, but it's very enjoyable because you know you're doing something that is causing a very positive impact in the community. Mika was incredible this weekend and even in most of his performances. But I think he has been uh, away from the Gi tournaments for a while, but he surely made a point this weekend, right? Yes, for sure. He, uh, Mika is in a different level. Um, I have been spending a lot of time with him in these last couple of days, you know, and um, I had an opportunity to, to, to hear from him you know, to get to know him better, in a in a in a more intimate uh, my, uh, way, and um, it tells a lot why he's who he is. You know, the kid is, is in, has an incredible heart, has an incredible focus, is humble. He knows what he wants. He he knows how to train. Mick uh, Melky, his father, is an amazing coach. You know, like the the. Uh, the re relationship between them both is really uh, something special. Um, Mika definitely is a special guy. Um, what do you think it takes? What do you think it takes to be? So there is there is professional level, right? And then there is high level, mm -hmm. and then there is people like Mika. What what makes the difference? Look, a lot of people. This actually was one of the conversations we had just uh, while we were having um, a lunch together. You know. A lot of people says that, you know, uh, if you want to be a, a fighter, you shouldn't teach because it, it stops your, your goal, it, stop, it stops your focus to improve, you know, and uh, you need to focus on yourself. And, you know, a lot of people also say that if you are a good fighter, you cannot be a good coach. And then if you are a good coach, it's because you wasn't a good fighter, father, a fighter. Well, I am the proof that this is possible because I consider myself, I'm not saying that I'm the greatest coach in the world, but I consider myself a good coach because uh, of the results of my, the popularity in my seminars and the comments. And, and I know that I have been spending a lot of time teaching. And for me, for myself, to achieve whatever I achieved coming from nothing in Brazil, because a lot of people think that Braulio team is Brazilian, has been trained with all the black belts, blah, blah, blah. I didn't. I didn't train with black belts until I was a brown belt. You know, there was no black belts around my city. You know, it's pretty much similar how Abu Dhabi was back in the day when there was no professors teaching. Okay? So exactly the same. Like the closest black belt was three hours by airplane away. So it wasn't easy, but it was possible, right? Because if I made it, it was possible. But I know what I had to go through to be able to understand jiu-jitsu in a much deeper way, to be able so I can take my own conclusions on the adversities of the fight and make this strategy uh, according to my body style, my way of understanding jiu-jitsu, right? And it worked. So I speak to Mika, guess what? He teaches every day. He teaches every day. And a lot of people, they say uh, that teaching doesn't help. Maybe they didn't spend time teaching with the intentions to make a difference on other people's game. They maybe were, was that just for the money to teach or just to, to spend the time and leave, you know? That's all about the intentions. When I came here, I had purely the intention to make a difference on everyone's because remember the first thing that you asked me for, well, how I ended up in the UK. I came here to spread the, the jiu-jitsu law. And then by doing that, even the things that I already knew became even more clearer to the point that I could develop and redevelop whatever I already knew because I had so many minds that I was teaching that people come with a different perspective. And then you start taking your own conclusions on what really matters or not about the technique and you start going to the core of the principles and then you end up being more... Uh, you end up learning. What you, already you end know. up learning more. Even more. And by by giving, giving, you end up taking. Correct, because you gotta, you you got to share. When you share things that you know, but with the intentions to make a positive difference on your surrounding, 
things comes back to you in a much uh, stronger way. And that's what happened to me. And I believe that is what's happening to Mikab after talking to him. It's been incredible talking to him. He's such a, an amazing kid. And uh, it tells a lot why he's so sharp, because he's so much ahead of everyone on his age. He's only 19, you know, but he's teaching and he has a passion for the jiu-jitsu. And uh, he d does really want to make a difference, you know, like showing good examples uh, to inspire the next generations with the right uh, direction. Another young athlete uh, who seems on the best track is uh, Sarah Galvao. Did you see her performance performing yeah, as a blue belt right in the away. purple belt division, winning all four fights, submitting to not even getting one point against her? This girl, you know, I feel she's the future. Yeah, she is. Like, like uh, when I mentioned about Mika Galvão, about teaching, right? Uh, it is his differential for me, okay? Comparing to my background. Because he's also don't have of trainings. He's the best of his crew that he trains, right? So, but he's still evolving, right? Because of the teaching. But at the same time, you know, like uh, Sara Galvão, had dad is one of the, you know, superstars of, and her mom as well, uh, you know what I mean? Like uh, Angelica, they, they are uh, amazing parents that has an amazing structure and there's amazing uh, references that trains there all the time. So she born pretty much in the mat and I was I had an opportunity to, to talk to her and she loves it. She just loves it. And that's the thing, you know what I mean? Uh, when you see, it doesn't matter what you do in life. If you do something that you really have passion about, you know what I mean? It's the first thing that you should try to connect because you have a better chance to do it better than if you do something that you don't really have the passion because there will be times that you don't want to do things that you got to do. But when you have the passion, you do it anyway. So you have more reps, more chances of doing right. Correct. So um, I, I see the, 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 the also uh, both of them, uh, they have the real uh, intentions of to do as good as they can do. They try to be as good as they could be. They don't try to be, uh, as Sarah Galvão, it's not try to be the new uh, uh, Andre Galvão. She's not trying to be the new Angelica Galvão. She wants to be Sarah Galvão. You know what I mean? And Mika, the same. So it's very similar, uh, the mindset, which is all come down to the individual, that they have the, the choice to, to take the intentions on the right path. You know? And once you start being understanding that it's all about your own uh, input, if you put your mind on the right direction, and do the hard work that it goes through, you you achieve, you know? And uh, if you have access to amazing uh, reference to train every day, is, 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 is that for you, right? And if you don't, like Mika, you teach, and then with the intention to make it the team grow, and everyone grows. And that's what Andre Galvão did to his team. His team became successful, and then that's what uh, Sara now has uh, an army as a reference, you know, and that's what our team does. And then that's the beauty of what Jiu Jitsu is all about, you know, and I'm it's sure individual sport, you're the perfect the example. Sport. You're the perfect example of passion and achievement. And I'm curious to know what you have planned uh, to improve the Jiu Jitsu scene in the UK even more and more. Well, uh, Jiu Jitsu here in UK is, is growing a lot. And um, Jiu Jitsu became uh, for a long time my tool to to help people to become a better version of, them, of themselves you know and uh, my goal really is to continue expanding uh the jiu-jitsu here my the, the, the my academy of course you know my team and uh, but at the same time is expanding uh the competition scenario that has more opportunities for all the other academies to also get inspired to go there and try to improve themselves because the challenge of competing it, it, it makes you try to understand the uh, the difficulties sometimes you win sometimes you lose sometimes it's, it's hard and then when you put your time like Mika you know he didn't train for three months uh, for, for three years with, with, without the gi uh, with the gi sorry and he goes and come back and still doing the same why 
there is always a lesson there. I already told you why. After London, it seems that you guys have big plans for the UK. Yes, we have big plans. The idea is to make as many competitions as possible for the community, you know, help people to understand the rules, understand uh, what we are about, and um, making the, the, the right steps to create a strong community. You know, the UK was one of the biggest community in Europe to grow jiu-jitsu, you know, so it is the biggest community in the Europe right now. So it's the end, but that is only the beginning. The potential is, is huge and in Europe as well. So uh, I think uh, the team is strong, you know, everyone very focused on the same direction and um, it's the, it is very exciting, the future. Braulio, thank you for being part of the show. It's been an honor. Thank you for your time. And we will surely chat again very soon. Thank you very much. Zahir. Really a pleasure for me. You guys have a great day out there. You too. Chatting with Brolio is like chatting with an encyclopedia. This guy, always a legend. Thank you for the chat. Coming up next, we have Sean Goolsby, as mentioned in the intro. Stay tuned. Sean, I really appreciate the time you're taking uh, for this quick chat. I know you have training. I saw your name no registered. Problem. I saw your name registered uh, for the Abu Dhabi Grand Slam London, but I didn't see you on the mats. What happened there? No, um, unfortunately, I had a uh, an unfortunate event. Uh, they canceled my my plane, um, and uh, so I had to repurchase another one. And it was just way out of way out of way out of budget, and um, so I just decided to stay local. So you stayed local, but I'm sure you were uh, interested to watch the event, right? Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, I stayed tuned on uh, AGP. They have their subscription service. And um, I watched uh, my my professor, Claudio Palacios. I watched him. I watched a few other guys that I follow here. So it was very, it was a very nice event. Um, I remember being there last year. And it just kind of gave me those thrills. I, I, I want to be there. I'm really upset that I didn't get to go. So you mentioned uh, you were training with uh, Coach Claudio, and uh, that was where in the States, right? No, no, that was, that was in Brazil, Sao Paulo. Oh, in Sao Paulo. Yes, uh, yes. So tell us I about this. Uh, yeah, exactly. Tell us about your jiu-jitsu journey <laughs> and uh, how did you end up in UAE? So um, I started, to, I moved to Brazil in 2015. I started training in Manaus. And... Uh, after some time, I ended up moving to Sao Paulo, and uh, and I I found actually I started so I started training with one an affiliate of, of Kalasans, and I was just kind of like the biggest one at the at the gym, and I just wanted more. I was more more competition focused, you know. And uh, so they kind of he said, "No, you need to go to go see go see Claudia." So I went there, and it was like uh, it's like home the first training. I was beat up and abused, but I tell you, it really made me into the person that I am, and uh, I'm very happy that I was able to get a black belt underneath him. So yeah, that's good. And now I'm here because so I came here to fight World Pro, and um, I was just kind of, kind of like in amazement of, of of Abu Dhabi, and I seen all these professors, high level professors, living here, training here. And I just want to be a part of it. So um, I found my way. And uh, fast forward a year and some change later, I, I ended up getting called. So right now you're coaching? You're coaching here? Yes, yes. I coach here at Arena. And I also coach in the schools. Nice. And from, a, from someone who used to compete professionally and still is competing all over the AJP scene, how does coaching influence your own your own training and competition mindset. So for for coach, you know, you need to be meticulous. You need to be methodical. You you it, it kind of as as a competitor or the type of learner I am in general. Uh, I I just kind of float towards concepts, not towards small details. And I think that was kind of what's been missing out of my game are the small details. So when you become a coach, and you kind of have to stop and actually think you know uh, with details how to 
you know, just a, a small, we call it the invisible jujitsu, right? So, and I think as a coach, um, that, that's part really came out of me and uh, it shows on the tatami. Awesome, awesome. So, I also saw you competing in uh, the first ever event which AJP conducted in Egypt. How was the atmosphere yes, there? Was... I wasn't there. Next time, I'm definitely going to be jumping on that plane. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So that was an awesome experience. The The arena was beautiful. Uh, it was very, you know, I felt like an Olympic athlete at that point. Uh, it was really nice. Um, the The atmosphere was nice. Everyone was friendly. But there were, and I didn't know that uh, Egypt had so much jiu-jitsu. I was like, I was very surprised. Uh, and I was very surprised too at the high level they had. Like, it was it was very, I was excited. I was excited to say the least. And, Around 500 uh, athletes there was in this championship. You know, there's a big martial yeah. arts and wrestling scene in uh, Egypt. So I, I feel like they're going to be very big on jiu-jitsu in the next five years. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, and they were in the finals. You know, the Egyptians were in the finals almost every almost every, um, every category. So it was very, it was very nice. Very nice. Um, What's next for you? I know there's a lot of AJP championships happening now. The fact that you couldn't go to London, probably now you have uh, that extra budget aside. What's what's coming up? So now this weekend, I will be fighting matches in adult here in uh, Abu Dhabi. Uh, after that, I mean, I plan to every 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 weekend. I'll be somewhere and fighting AJP. So that's the plan. So we'll probably see you in. Grand Slam in Abu Dhabi and in the Grand Prix in oh, Paris. For sure, I uh, well, rank number one in the United States, so uh, I plan to kind of bring that over to the general category, and you know, we'll see what we can do. Oh, you're you're ranked number one. How do you see the competition uh, around here? I see, I saw that you were in the heavyweight division of different uh, local championships. Is there like mm -hmm. a memorable match so in your head? So let me go back to my head um, that I've had here in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. So uh, I remember match in my head here in Abu Dhabi. I would say was um, the first time I was like, wow, they have some some high level guys right here. So there was a Russian guy that I went to as a brown belt for the World Pro actually, and um, ended up losing that match two to zero. But I, that's when I really realized, wow, there's some high level guys out here. He, he, uh, unfortunately, it took a loss for me to realize that, but, you know, it happens. Um, but that was my first, like, wow, there are some, some high-level guys. So, um, and, of course, I have no gi, and gi. I, I am, I'm pretty happy. I, I think I can evolve from here, so. Sean, uh, thank you a lot for sharing your thoughts and experiences. I'm not going to make this long for you. I know you want to jump and go to training. I'll be seeing you around the mats, yeah? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Always a pleasure seeing you and also talking to you this time. Guys, I met this guy in training here in Mubadala Arena. Funny guy. I didn't know he was a famous player. Sean, thanks for joining. Up next, we have Ahmed Majid from Anubis Academy. And we're going to talk extensively about all the noise that AJP Tour, Egypt National Pro, a bombastic event in the historic city of Cairo, over 500 athletes from all over the world, 350 plus athletes from Egypt itself. Ahmad, you were there, your students were there. Tell me about the atmosphere. Ahmad, thank you for joining us today. Uh, thank you so much, the pleasure is all mine. For our viewers who might not uh, know you very well, Ahmad is a black belt, one of the few black belts in Egypt, and also founder of Anubis Martial Arts Academy. Ahmad, I know yes, that um, uh, you were in attendance for the first ever AJP event in Egypt. Yep. And I also know that you are deeply involved in the jiu-jitsu scene in Egypt. So tell me, what was yes. the feedback about the event? What was their reaction? Uh, the event was amazing. Uh, the whole jiu-jitsu scene is, is very happy with such a huge step. In, uh, in the Egyptian jiu-jitsu scene, uh, there's a lot, there was a lot of competitors and there was a lot of local competitors that got to shine and got to show showcase their skills on the biggest mat or the biggest uh, event in, in the Middle East and in the world. 
uh, under the umbrella of AGP. So uh, it was amazing. The atmosphere was great. The environment was amazing. Um, there were some, some, you know, problems with the referees. I know we, we, we totally understand because it's the first event in Egypt and, and the referees are still, the local referees are still are in progress with the training and all of that. Other than that, it was, it was perfect. Tell me a little bit about the atmosphere in the arena. I heard it was something else. Yeah, it was something else. It had the Egyptian flavor with all the, the, the good uh, noises and sounds and, and, and trumpets and everything. It was, it's definitely different. And uh, we've met with a lot of Russian brothers there and they were like, wow, you Egyptians, can, you know how to hype your players up. So. Yeah, 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 it was it was amazing with that uh, with that great Egyptian flavor. So, yeah. And and about hyping the players, uh, how did your team do? Uh, we actually did very well. We uh, we scored nine gold medals, uh, seven silver medals, and five uh, five bronze medals. So uh, in total, about twenty uh, or twenty-two. Uh, uh, yeah, more, more close to 25 medals overall. We were competing, uh, we were participating with around 24 players or, some, or something. So it was a great, it was a great, uh, it was a great accomplishment, a great uh, result. Uh, mostly our our fighters or our players competed in the no game more. We had only three competitors in the game. So, um, but overall, it was the performance was was incredible. We were very proud of our players. And what were some like? key takeaways from uh, from the championship for your team and even for yourself? I know you will eventually uh, start competing again under the AJP. Yes, of course, of course, of course. Uh, the biggest takeaway is that a lot of a lot of our players, a, a lot of our white belts and blue belts got to compete uh, for the first time ever. And some uh, some are competing again. This is, this is not their first competition. They competed over and over in Egypt. And they only competed in Egypt, so they got to be exposed to the, the kind of preparation that they have to be, and the, the kind of uh, the kind of events that AGP are organizing. So it gave the, it gave them that kind of an indication or a feel of how the, the competitions outside of Egypt, in in Europe or in Abu Dhabi or in Dubai or in any of the other countries that AGP are touring, what kind of atmosphere that that you can get at these major competitions. So it was definitely very beneficial for all the competitors. And our, our uh, purple, purple bots and brown bots that haven't have been competing for a while, they started competing and then representing. So they got that fire back uh, under them. So more and more people will be, will be involved from Anubis in, in, uh, in the further competitions, whether it's in Egypt or uh, outside of Egypt. And uh, talking about growth, what steps are being taken to continue fostering that growth and engagement in the jiu-jitsu community in all, Egypt? Yes, yes, for sure. Uh, first of all, now the players have an, an, an exact or an identified purpose for the training that the end of the season or, or, or you know, in the middle of the season, there's this major competition that you have to be preparing for all year round. So this will elevate the uh, the level so much um, the academies will start to be a little bit more tight and more um, uh, you know quality quality focus on the training because now you're not only competing against other local competitors you're competing with international competitors and we've seen a couple of black belts that I've been seeing all over the place in in, AG, in the AGP tours and I've met them uh, a lot of times in, uh, in, uh, in Abu Dhabi and Dubai. Uh, they were competing in Egypt, so for for the new black belts or the, the upcoming black belts and brown belts that are coming out uh, out of uh, out of the jiu-jitsu scene in Egypt, they have to elevate their game way too much to be able to be able to compete with such caliber of of competitors that are competing nearly every weekend all over all over the world. So we have to all work together to be able to elevate the level of. Uh, of uh, the whole jiu-jitsu scene in Egypt to be able to compete because our objective is to compete with the other international competitors, not only locally. So the growth is coming and it's coming big in Egypt. And what is some real feedback that you got 
from your students like some some real sentences which like they come ah coach this and that uh, first of all, there's a couple of competitors that have been competing for the first time, so for them to be competing uh, for the first time at an event that that big, uh, they were a little bit overwhelmed. So our 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 tips always are that you the training physically is much harder than the competition. The competition is basically it's more of an, an emotional stress or an emotional toll on you than the physical toll. So you have to you have to uh, to find the balance between uh, you becoming ready and relaxed, and at the same time not way too relaxed. So you do not give your opponent the or the match. It's it's, it's an important importance for you to win, or for you to be able to uh, if you lost by two points to come back at that uh, at that uh, at that match. So that was the biggest takeaway from most of the players, and that. I thought before going on the mat, uh, some players were, were telling me, or some competitors were telling me that I thought before going on the mat, like this is the, the hardest thing that I'll ever do. But when I got on the mat and I actually started competing, they are not doing anything that I'm, I'm not familiar with. So They were well prepared, yeah. let's call it that. They were well prepared. Oh, yeah, they were very well prepared. So it was, it was, it was great. It was great. So we would be seeing more of your team in the upcoming championships, I, I'm sure there is the uh, continental. There's a continental championship for AJP happening in the Egypt. The African one, the African one, yes. This time we're gonna go with the whole lineup. Like I, I, I me personally, I'm deci I decided that I want to compete in that competition. And uh, our head coach, uh, Captain Mohammed Omar uh, Zizou, is competing as well. So we're gonna go with the whole lineup from white up until black this time. And uh, how do you? How are you going to juggle between getting your team ready and getting personally ready? Uh, first of all, getting the team ready is uh, our head coach's uh, our head coach's uh, job. And Muhammad Omar Zizou's uh, job. He's our first black belt, and he's the head coach of the team. So he he makes sure that the preparation for the past competition was amazing, and he held the camp for the past three months. It was it was it was flawless to be to be honest. And he's the one who's going to be preparing me personally. So, uh, so this is this is the part, and I think we're gonna we're going to separate the trainings uh, with me, Zizou, and a couple of the black belts and a couple of uh, brown belts and purple belts in the morning. And the main competition training for the rest of the uh, for the rest of the team is going to be in the evening. So everyone gets their time to actually train and actually prepare for the competition. It's going to be great uh, watching you compete and watching your team compete on our mats. Uh, Ahmad, it's been an absolute pleasure having this chat with you. Thank you Thanks so a lot much. for your time. Thank you so much, Dave. Thank you so much. The pleasure is all mine. And see you. I'm looking forward to competing again and again in the AGP Tour. Thank you, Ahmad, for your input. I really appreciate your presence in our first episode. Next time, guys, I will surely be in Egypt when AJP goes there again. I appreciate everyone tuning in. This episode was a blast. Sharif, hit that outro.